Good morning, Steve and Matt. Don, Andy, and Ken haven't returned yet. Now, let me share something while I go and get some boiling water. Hello, Andy. I know I'm terrible doing it with my phone because I'm too busy looking and I don't look at my phone. Hey, Buster. Hello, Alaskan Nomad. So that was the good one. Now I'll show you the bad news. Hey, Katrina, you missed a good, good show. Now you're going to see the bad news. Thank you. 
the good thing is I did manage to rebreed Mooney yesterday. Hello, Richmond. It was her first litter. She's almost a year old. But she didn't take care of any of them, so we're going to try one more time. And this time it's on the calendar, so I know exactly when to put that nesting box in. Because last time I didn't think, but yesterday I actually seen her lift for Bucky. Yep. Now, you guys, I got a bunch of good eggs that are already that I cooked last night, and I got six cups out. Now each cup will get one tablespoon of vinegar. I don't know, Katrina. I'm trying not to focus on it. Since I got six little cups here, each cup gets a tablespoon of vinegar. I forgot another measure cup. Hold on a second. Hmm. Excuse me, Lucy. Half a cup of boiling water in each cup. See, what I'm using is these little juice cups. Hello, Echo. Well, me, I don't like um, senseless death like that, you know. But I just tell myself, well, Lucy got some unexpected meat. So it wasn't a total waste. Okay, now I take my Dollar General Special that's about two years old, three years old. Let me see.
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the next one is going to have red in it. Where did I see it at? On the lid. Twenty-four red. I'll do fifteen in here. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. That's one, two, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 red. Because one's going to be a light red and the other one's going to be a deep purple. Oh, I guess I'm, I don't have any yellow left. So I'll do two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve green and three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Green on that one. Now we do purple is how many blues go to that red? 16 blues. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to put some blues in this one green. So it's more of a teal color. And then a light blue. And then a darker blue. With just a little bit of red in it. Okay, I can get three eggs in each one in this little cup. Let's see. Hey, Fran. And Richmond says, so sorry, that's okay. We're dying Easter eggs, Steve. See, you take a half a cup of boiling water. Um, a tablespoon of vinegar. Now I'm going to let them set for a few minutes while I get my paper towel out for them to dry on. Yeah, I just used the cheap dye because it was cheaper than the color tablets and you can use it for more things than just dyeing eggs. Yeah, the thing about quilt eggs is they're just bite-sized for kids. See, I had a rule. My kids had to eat an egg. 
or a piece of fruit before they were allowed to attack all their candy. Unless you make many baskets out of meringue and nestle some eggs, colored eggs in that. No, but you could do it, Katrina, as long as you use some of the pickling juice. Cool. Strawberry baskets are a good idea. Oh, yeah, those meringue nests, you make it more not so smooth and make it more spiky looking. So it looks like it's made out of sticks. Yeah. Just let the beets die there, as many don't like eggs colored, especially green. They won't eat green eggs. Oh, come on, because green eggs and ham are great. <laughs> yeah, but then you have to remember it's going to have a light blue tint as well. Okay. Now to get my fork out. And you know, the longer you leave the eggs in the um, water, the solution, the darker they get. There's the red one. Let me turn on this light here. There, now you can see the color better. <laughs> Then you wipe off your fork before you go into the next color. Uh oh, whoops, Lucy got one. See this deep purple? Makes it almost look black. Okay, Lucy, get it. Get the egg mama dropped. There's the dark green. I mean the green rather. Now here's more of the teal color. Oh, even the lighter purple come out darker. That's almost a black. No, that's, yeah, that's darker. Now there's the blue. Now, I'm going to add a little water to this one. 
and see if that puts them out a little less. Now I'm going to take them out right away and see what it comes out like. See, not letting it set very long. That's how the red comes out. I'm going to take the dark ones out real quick. See, there's the purple. Or the teal, rather. Here's the purple. And there's the green. And that blue looks almost green. Or was that teal? That's my teal. I think. Here's the blue. See, if you work fast, you get lighter colors. You work slow and you get darker colors. And I got three more left. So I'm going to put one, two, three. Let's see. <coughs> okay. We have a pickle guy at the farmer's market, so I buy his juice for pickling. Some of that eggs didn't take color for me last year. <laughs> Good morning, Laura. Oh, that's cold. Danny says, I thought you got rid of all your quill. He asked, where did you get the eggs from? The refrigerator. Well, eggs last a couple months in the refrigerator. Yeah, yours is about what ours is, I think, today. Because. Good morning, Rita. Yeah, you should dye some deep, moody green. And then incubate them for <laughs> jasmine. <laughs> I did dye Easter quail eggs last year for the first time. Love it. Crack shells and dyeing the eggs and peel them. They look like stained glass. It was cool. I was wondering ever they came from as well. Okay. And I tested them all last night to make sure they were good before I boiled them. 
Yes, drop the link, cuz. Dying Easter eggs, Desiree. Ooh, you're colder than, and you're cold too. Oh no, you broke your coop broom. In a few minutes, I'll show the eggs. But first, I got to get rid of all this dye. Excuse me, Lucy. Yeah, you. Oh, I forgot. I got three eggs in here still. Red. Green. And blue. <laughs> Now to get rid of the dye. I'll be right back, people. Excuse me, Lucy. Yeah, I don't think she wants to be dyed in colors. Yeah, that's true, Matt. And he spoke too, better than you breaking your arm. Oh, cuz. You are so silly. No tie dye, Lucy. <laughs> the only thing that would show it would be your face, anyhow. Let's see. Oh, I got to dry out. I got to get my, I have got to go get, I get my paper towels where they fell. There we go. Yeah, my cousin's silly sometimes. And my other cousin isn't here, Tommy. Of course, he would be my nephew because he always calls me Auntie Bay. Well, I'll give them a few minutes, and then I'll put them in this bowl that I dried out. Yeah, uh, Mooney had seven or eight kids. I think they were seven. You know how fast they move when you try to count them. But Mooney had four dead kits in her litter box.
But I knew something was up because she wasn't eating much at all. Whereas Smokey was, I mean, Mooney was eating like crazy. Smokey wasn't hardly eating at all. Now, on Jidro's uh, family store, that coupon runs out a week from tomorrow. And so does uh, free shipping. Let's see, we got 11 people in here and 15 likes very good thank you very much welcome back cuz Well, we've got 15 likes already. There's only 11 people in here. I need to find some more cups like that are the same size as Aaron's cup, Aaron and Katrina's cup. I can understand that. Money has to go where it's needed, not where you want it. But look at these quill eggs because they still have the bloom on them. Look how shiny the eyes come out. I need to take a picture of these eggs before I pick them up and put them away. I'm going to do one standing up over them. Good morning, Nikki and Don. Everybody saying good morning to each other. Nikki and Don came in within within the same minute. But look at these. They're dry. Look how shiny they are. And that's with the bloom. So that's the reds. And see it's so funny? As you can see. You don't have to decorate these eggs. They decorate themselves with their own spots. So you don't have to get all fancy when you're trying to die because it's already there. Mm -hmm. And there's the deep purple, almost black. Mm -hmm.
And see how shiny that green is? Now here, here's the teal. More of the deep purple. I think these are beautiful. Oh, that's all a spot. Light and dark. <laughs> now look how pretty that bowl looks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that is so true. But I'm not as dyed as I usually get. But that, this is just the McCormick coloring that I got about three years ago. Yeah, because this is the third Easter I used them. I don't know, Don. Just plain old washing dishes to take it off eventually. Good morning, PJ. Here's something more beautiful. I just finished doing them. So I'm going to go put these back in the in the refrigerator. I don't have my helper today. Yeah, PJ, you got to remember, the rest of the eggs for this week are going towards Easter. Yeah, <laughs> Steve says, don't put the incubator between the door and the refrigerator. <laughs> Easter is a week from tomorrow.
That's why I did diet eggs today so that you guys could be ready for next week. Eight days away. Well, you're going up to your grandson's for Easter and bringing him home. Well, then you need to take some colored eggs with you, huh? PJ. Matt, I'm sorry I missed that spontaneous live yesterday. I've been so so busy doing things, getting I'm getting getting things ready to harvest some rabbits. <clears throat> That's a good plan of action. My youngest daughter, when she was little, she loved Easter eggs so much that I had to put food coloring on them after they were peeled so that she could eat the beautiful colors. I know I didn't. When I got the notification, it didn't say live. It just looked like you uploaded it. Because if I would have seen it was live, I would have went there right away. <laughs> but I watched part of it, Matt. And those saddlebags look like the army saddlebags, whereas the saddlebags I got for Lucy, I can drape them on my belt and use them as a purse if needed. Okay, Lucy, come on up. Let me let me open the camera. <coughs> well, Andy, besides eating hard boiled eggs, you can make them and uh oh what do they call it where you wrap a hard boiled egg with sausage and bake it? Scotch eggs. Time to get him back into shape, Matt. Yeah, you had to take those little ones out first. Oh, man, PJ, can you see coloring duck eggs, turkey eggs, quail eggs, and chicken eggs all at once? That would be so fun.
and come up here. Up, up. Okay. There you go, guys. She's bugging the heck out of me. I think she's actually looking for more more eggs. But no, she guys she's showing you guys her beauty and had to share her belt. Whoops. Try to collect one that moved on me. I was disappointed last week I was on time for Saturday night and no live from Matt. Let's see if I can be on time today. <laughs> PJ says, excuse me, Lucy, I can't get to the mouse. Ah. Actually, I've never booked a turkey egg. Hmm, ideas. Well, in that case, you scratch off some of the wax and some of the um, eggs into decorations. <laughs> Hello, Shaga. You just missed earlier. I dyed eggs. And I just put those back in the refrigerator. Yeah, besides, Andy, you're using hot water when you first do the dye. Now, because you know she meant cooked. And you know, if you blow your eggs out, you can dye the shells and then keep them for decorations. And yeah, and it's an hour later for me than it is for you, Andy. Well, I appreciate you, Sugar. How you doing, Althea? <laughs> well, you don't have to blow them that way. There's a tool you can buy to do it. Well, thank you, Althea. Here, let me get the tool that you use to blow the eggs. I got it right over here. That way you don't have to put nothing to your lips. See? <laughs> Ain't no conceit in the family. Steve's got it all. <laughs> Thank you. It's C H O K I N G. <laughs> and at least you're not spewing. Althea, drop your link by typing exclamation point quail. Alrighty, Althea. 
We got 16 people in here. Rip, rip. <laughs> yeah, that would have been bad, PJ. Type the exclamation point and the word quail. It shows up on, on the blue that's running across. See where it says type the weather and your zip code to get your forecast. Then it says type exclamation point quail to drop your link. Yeah, that wouldn't have been too family friendly. <laughs> Thank you, cuz. Good morning, BJ. Choking works. And it has an H2. Yeah, choking does. Today is a grand day, but right now I need a cancer stick. Okay. And when I get done, I got to show you guys what I got in delivery. And I got it like five days sooner than they said it would be. Yeah, today is a blessed day. And Andy, your yesterday was a very productive day. Yep, because it was so productive. Well, thank you, Althea. You're always welcome in here. Hello, Jojo. And Jojo, don't don't forget Quellcon's coming up. Oh, Miss. Yep. The squeaking wheel always gets the grease. Yep. I, it wasn't an oops. I did it on purpose. I was shortening my sentences. From Maple, from maple Syrup House. Pancake breakfast. 
Well, you have a safe trip and be careful and have a blessed day. And speak of the devil, he appears. Hopping on to get my like. Lane has baseball today. Just finished the first game. Now we are waiting for the second one to start. Oh, cool. Good luck, Lane. Okay, JJ. I thought JoJo was you, but I wasn't sure. <laughs> okay, PJ. <clears throat> Jojo was JJ, Don. Well, try to do camping. Sleep in your truck. Bed goes the worst. Or get a tent. Wonderful, Aaron. I mean, Matt, that is great news. Yeah, you know what? I could almost do camping. And Chef is in the house. Chef, the, the first 45 minutes, I was dying quail eggs. Okay, let me get you a link. Well, tell him he can go to the hotel. You stay on the campgrounds. Brand, I seriously, I don't think my nerves would take it. I haven't been since the accident. I've been very uncomfortable. Um, if I'm not, if I don't go home. See, my rabbits would run out of water, too, because it, the things only hold 32 ounces of water. Hey, Chef. Good morning, good morning. How we doing? Just as crazy as ever. <laughs> you missed me dying quail eggs. I did. 
it's been a uh it's been a slow morning for me um i've been uh I, last week i had a, a different scheduling uh for work so i'm trying to get back into regular schedule programming uh-huh so, yeah uh it's been rough how you but it but uh how many eggs did you do i didn't count them oh <clears throat> let's see three times six twice so three times is 36 and three is 39 eggs wow <laughs> nice that's okay bc And they come out beautiful. I have to uh, rewatch so I can see that. Oh, yeah, because I got them in the refrigerator again now. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> yeah, we're about to head out, my daughter and I, to a, uh, we have a community Easter egg hunt thing here uh, for Easter um, every year. And it's usually the week before Easter, so I mean, there's a big green belt we have outside. And uh, the whole community comes out and, you know, throws a bunch of eggs out and breakfast and all that community fellowship, stuff like that. So uh -huh. we might head out to that soon. So they're doing it a week ahead of time? Yeah, they always do it the week before. <clears throat> That's cool. And Steve wants to know how's it going with the spices there? It's going good, man. Um, you know, we, we're still uh, pushing them the rubs out and um, we got uh, we're uh, actually we may no, I can't say that because I don't know if that's going to be true or not. I don't want to say something to you. That's not true. But um, we are we are selling <clears throat> um, trying to push out the rubs more right now because my daughter ha um, has a dance performance that she'll be doing in Utah in July uh, for the Stadium of Fire. It's one of the biggest um, fireworks shows and concerts um, uh, in the country. And it's broadcasted across uh, the world to all the armed forces um, on the on the armed forces channel. I forget what channel it is, but um, it'll be one of 500 girls that um, are invited uh, from across the country to dance uh, before the concert. So we're trying to push uh, the rubs right now. So, you know, the, the funds for that to um, travel costs and things like that for her. But it's um it's it's been a blessing, man. You know, um, I can't complain. Um, you know, we're, we're constantly pushing them out. People are constantly ordering. We have repeat customers, so it's been it's been good. <clears throat> yeah, well, with me, I got four your four bottles of your stuff, and it's just me here. So <laughs> those four bottles will last me a long time. Yeah, <laughs> I put them on everything. <laughs> I just sent out um, two one-pound bottles uh, to to Georgia, a, a pound of um, SPG and then a pound of uh, summer heat. And then uh, my neighbor just ordered two two uh, jalapeno bottles, both uh, well two pounds. He's like, hey, because he's he's my neighbor's about to take off. Uh, they're flying out of the country, and he's like, man, I can't live without it. So can you hook me up? <laughs> What's the AFN? There you go. Armed Forces Network. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he put American Forces Network. <laughs> Our old American Forces. Yeah. My bad. I apologize to to the everyone in the service. My bad. <clears throat> Swanson, you got some? You have some of the rubs? It's never too cold, man. No, not only that, you don't just use them for um, Barbecue. barbecuing. You use them if you're baking your meat, you're frying your meat, you use it on popcorn, any of that yep. stuff. That's how I use it. <laughs> yeah, you can put it on salad. You can put it on a salad if you want. You got a Caesar salad or, or any type of salad, mac yeah. salad, potato salad. Um, you can put it on any of that. You can put it in your mac and cheese. 
<clears throat> doesn't necessarily have to be just barbecue. You know, we, we try to make it for uh, like an all spice almost um, uh, to where you can use it for anything, you know, even with the heat, the different heat levels we have, you know, if you like heat. So. <clears throat> yeah, I have fun with it. Yeah. You can oh. put a little butter on it to make it stick more to the popcorn, JJ. Or you can do it without butter and just get the flavor. Either way, it's good. I will tell you, the only place that I get a, I feel the heat is a little bit on my lips. The rest of me can handle it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny because um, the rubs, each different level of heat hits differently. You know, one will hit you on the lips, one will hit you in the back of the throat. You know, one will hit you on your cheeks. One one will make your face kind of feel like you're uh, a little bit burning up. It's weird. You know, that's the ghost pepper one. Well, see, well, I don't use ghost pepper. Yeah. I use a habanero or the jalapeno or the summertime heat. Summertime heat's my favorite. <clears throat> yeah, that's one of my, that's my favorite too right now. <clears throat> I use that. I use that in the SPG because of my daughter. But... Yeah, you can That's put it on crazy. anything, you know, like she said, popcorn, salads, cold stuff, you know, put it on your corn. You got corn on the cob. Yeah, I mean, you can put it up pretty much on anything, fruits. Yeah, so I got SPG. I got the habanero. I got the jalapeno, and I got summertime heat. Yeah, she's got the quad. Because <clears throat> I ordered the trio, and you sent me the the fourth one. Mm -hmm. Because of being the hundredth order. <laughs> now I bet you get thousands of orders. We we've had. I mean, we've been doing this for over two years now, so we've had uh -huh. numerous amounts of orders and stuff. Um, when we dropped the website, <clears throat> that's um, well, it took us about a year and a half before we actually dropped the the website. Uh, or a year or something like that. So that when we got the website going and everything, that you were the 100th uh, customer on the website. So, yep. which is good because we have we have the proof. We have you know what I'm saying all all the documents and everything. So, um, being that you were the 100th customer, we went ahead and uh, sent you a, a gift. It even, yeah, it even said so on my receipt. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so, shout out to Verna for for being the 100th customer. <laughs> well, not only that, I've also ever since I got it and tasted it, I've been promote. I promoted you all through the Christmas season. I appreciate it. You know, surprisingly, we didn't get any orders for Christmas. Believe it or not. <laughs> well, everybody was work uh worrying about other things. Yeah, yeah. I I don't I don't take it to heart. Oh, just... you got ah, uh, you got one order during Christmas. I know that. Because I do order during the Christmas season, and I gave it as an early Christmas present to my oh. nurse. Okay, I'll have to go back in there and check it out because I could. Yeah, I just have to let them allow me in the kitchen. <laughs> they say your kitchen is outside. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that used to be me for a while. My wife wouldn't let me in the kitchen either because, man, I would just leave. I'd, honestly, I'd leave a mess. I use a lot of yeah. dishes. And uh, she's always, like, worried. Don't burn down my kitchen. It, uh, there's been a couple of lives, live cooks that I did with collaborate other collab uh, channels and um, got the heat a little bit too hot, and you can see the smoke in the background. And Yeah, so <laughs> believe it or not, this man, That's even though – that's like the guy below me. Every time he broils anything, it sets off his fire fire alarm. Yeah, he broil broil broils a little bit too long. You only need a couple minutes when you broil something. Either that or it's too close to the element because it's a electric instead of gas. Yeah, we have an electric stove too, so I use that sometimes. Um, like if I'm doing, uh, very rarely when I do ribs in the oven, I'll, <clears throat> I'll uh, cook them up and then I'll hit the sauce over the top, right? Then I'll throw the broiler on about no more than five minutes. 
and you can see it bubbling up. I got the light on for the oven and I'm looking at it and I'm watching it because I, I don't want it to get to that point, you know, where, where we're smoking up too much, you know. Well, see, our landlord is El Cheapo. Our ovens don't have lights in them. Oh, no. Mm -mm. <clears throat> I'm sorry. If I didn't have a light, I'd be using a flashlight. So, <laughs> or I have this headlamp that I use when I go camping. <laughs> Anytime I brought anything, I forget about it and get smoked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing with the broiler. Like, you only need a few minutes, so, yeah. The only time I sear anything is during the warm weather where I can have my exhaust fan going. Hmm. <clears throat> Because, you know, searing things, you always get a little smoke. Because mm -hmm. it's a high heat, even though it's a short period of time. Right. We have our uh, a microwave above, <clears throat> excuse me, above our stove. And so we have the, um, the fan that goes on, and it'll suck the smoke up most of the time. <laughs> I got to make sure to keep that screen clean, though, that underneath the bottom. Otherwise, it don't work. Yeah, well... The landlord is so cheap here, we don't even have a light over our stove, wow. let alone a fan. Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> I cussed him out, out one time. We called him a cheap A SOB. And I walked away because my temper was too high and I was, it would cause me problems. <laughs> so I walked away from him and you know, he takes pride in being called that. Yeah. He just, I bet you he just laughed on. Huh? <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. I was mad <clears throat> enough. I wanted to hit him, uh, hit him, but instead I used my mouth. <laughs> what was that? I'm sorry. I said, I was mad enough to hit him at the time. <laughs> But instead, I use my mouth. And I walk away. If you let me walk away, we're fine. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, we, I lived in apartments for many, many years. And I, I, we've gone through multiple different um, personalities of landlords and stuff. I think the last place we had before we moved to Arizona was the worst. Um, these folks had bought the property and you know everybody was renovating the, the the units and all that like throughout the whole city where we were at at the time um looking for you know looking to upgrade um their their rent costs and stuff so i remember <clears throat> when they, they tried to come into my house without giving me notice i was at work and my son was home and uh my son calls me up he's like hey some dude just walked into our house and i was like what the hell like pass him the phone and i was like what are you doing in my house? He's like, oh, well, we have an order to check this out. That I said, nobody gave me any notice. I said, I, I'd advise you to get out of my house now. <laughs> and then uh, after that, I hung up and I, I, I only worked 10 minutes away. So I drove over there and I went over and talked to the contractor, got into it with him and started going off on him as well. And uh, they were calling the owner and they were trying to break into my garage because they were doing the paving. They were they were doing the asphalt, and then they never gave me any notice. So I'm like, "What are you guys doing?" Like, you know, they they didn't know that I knew the knew all my rights and stuff, and yeah, it was all bad for them. Yeah, I had one landlord when I first moved down here. I had one landlord didn't want to renew my lease because I knew too much about the law. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, grease fires, gas grill, grease fires can be scary. Um, however, if you're far away enough from your house, you don't have to worry too much. Just turn your gas off, close your lid, and just let it burn out. Um, it, it, one thing that does is really help to, to burn out a lot of the grease. Unfortunately, you'll have a lot of black smoke, um, but it, it helps to clean up the grill a little bit. So turn your gas, turn your gas off, close your lid, and uh, pull your propane tank away from that. I've, yeah. I've a few times one thing you don't want to do is put water on it because 
grease, grease and water don't mix and that's just going to flare everything up. So just FYI guys. <clears throat> Yeah, my flames on the grass grill never reach my house. <laughs> That's, good. That's good. Yeah, my grills are far away enough from my house, and then we have a brick wall around them. So there's really not, nothing that's going to catch unless I have a canopy up and the flames get too high. But I, um, I, I keep my stuff – I try to keep my stuff um, um, minimal when it comes to uh, having a lot of grease in there. <laughs> Oh, this is always fun. A little extra char. Hey, you know. <laughs> hey, that's good for your stomach. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you have the QR code up there in the top corner. Well, thank you. That's awesome. That's for Quail University. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <clears throat> I gotta, I gotta process some rabbits, then I gotta, and I gotta start on my fourth cookbook. Oh wow, fourth one, huh? Yeah, you haven't got any of the others yet, have you? No, I have not. You said you're going to do that months ago. <laughs> no, I did get the one that I told you I would. I did get the one. Okay. <laughs> I, I even told you when when, it, when I did it because you were on a live, and I said I got it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. Rem I don't remember. Yeah, because you, you, you gave me a hard time about it at that point. And I was like, you know what? You're right. I did say that. So, boom. <laughs> it was ten at midnight. And I was in the house trying to stay warm. Oh, it's ten degrees outside. Oh. Yeah. Wait until she puts out the rubs cookbook. <laughs> Because the rub cookbook will end up having your um, your link for your store since it's an electronic cookbook. Man, that's what's up. I appreciate you. I'll definitely be getting that one. <laughs> Do you have any recipes for goat or or lamb or any any other meats? Um, I mean, everything we've done, um, as far as, uh, what's on my YouTube is, is really what we have, but lamb, lamb and goat. No, I don't have anything. Um, I actually have a, a rack of lamb that I had gotten. It's in the freezer actually. <clears throat> and, um, I haven't, I've never done lamb before. So that's something I've been wanting to do. I just been really, really hesitant. Um, I have a duck in the freezer also. And, um, what a goat? No, I haven't done any goat. <clears throat> Well, JJ, when you bro broil that lamb, sprinkle some of the summertime heat on it. JJ, the it summer heat. Is, huh? I was asking JJ if they have summer heat. If not, you gotta get it. You gotta get some. <laughs> www.drunkerchefrose.com. <laughs> I posted it once. I'll post it again. There you go. Andy, I know. It's just, uh, yeah. <laughs> At the time that I bought it, it was late, and I wasn't about to put it over there, you know, put, <laughs> put it on the grill or do whatever with it. So, Yeah, that's the grilling recipe is what I'm going to do next, and that's going to be with the rubs. You do that, you make me want to cut it in half. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm split in the middle, but <laughs> it ain't gonna stop. Hello, Shan Retirement. And Shan Tireman, I mean. <clears throat> I use the summertime heat on quail because it's a light a light heat. It's a good heat. But it, it isn't overpowering on the quail. What any of them, if you sprinkle lightly, is not overpowering. 
I think with the lamb, the habanero would work best. With the lamb. Because I like cooking leg of lamb. <laughs> now, something I've never had, but I'm I'm wanting to try, and that's goat meat. Goat meat, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, we usually like um, as being being uh, Mexican, um, we do like tacos, a lot of tacos with it. <clears throat> it's just something quick and easy, but it's good. Not too many people like it. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can find my uh, uh, playlist. I did a bacon wrap coil one time. I don't know if I ever told you that. Yeah, did you? What did you stuff it with? Um, I I want I believe it was a jalapeno I put in there, and then I wrapped it in bacon. I'm looking for it right now. <clears throat> what you do is you take the jalapeno, and stuff that with cream cheese, put yeah. the lid on it, and then wrap it in bacon. Yeah, we've done that. Uh, I I want to say we did that exactly, but um, I'm I'm looking for it right now. Give me a second. Delicious foods. Not really, um, Desiree. That I have to say I disagree. It depends on how you cook it. Because I cook all my meats well done. Because if something ain't done enough, Lucy gets it. You have a blessed day, Matt. Blessed day to you, too. See you tonight. He's on at, um, I don't know what time zone you're on. But for me, it's like uh, 10 o'clock at night. Eastern Standard Time. Are you going live or something? No. Grafton Branch Homestead goes live. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, he already got his notification out, Steve. That link that I just dropped has the uh, the quail. It's uh, smoked quail bombs, and then I also did some Cornish game hands that same day. That's cool. It's a 17-minute video, of course. This is when I, let I me, guess. Let me, let, me, let me see if I can find it. Well, shoot, I can't do it that way. I have to do it this way. Oh, this is when I was smoking my meatloaf, too. <laughs> oh, no, that was the intro. My bad. Let me see. What the heck? That's not the right one. Oh, no, that's not the right one there. Let me see. There we go. I used... Uh, Two different rubs for that. I use an Uncle Steve's that rub. Just, that just shows the uh, your channel. Huh? That one just showed your channel, the one. That link that I sent you? Or that I did? Okay, now I see. Here you go. Here yeah. we go. So we did do you put mind if we watch? Do you mind if we watch some of it? No, go ahead. If you're, if you're wanting, willing to share, go for it. <clears throat> We'll at least show part of it. Yeah. I won't get Jesus. you. I won't get you. Don't worry. <laughs> Why is my time zone confusing? On. It doesn't change. There's nothing confusing about it. <laughs> Hi, baby.
today's video, we're going to be doing a spatchcock Cornish game hen. And we also have some quail here. They're spatchcock. We're going to stuff them with a jalapeno cream cheese. And then we're going to wrap them up in bacon. Later on in the cook, we're going to glaze them up with something, but you have to stay tuned for that. In the meantime, if you want to learn how to do the spatchcock uh, part of it, go ahead and refer to this card above. And that was the first spatchcock chicken. I did a lot of care So I so want to get to it. What you want to do is you want to get a couple of paper towels and you just want to pat it dry. There's a lot of moisture in these because they're, they're using frozen solid when they're in the store. So when they thaw out, they're, they're, they have a lot of moisture on them. So just take a couple of paper towels, do both sides. Right here, normally I have the trash can next to me. Mm -hmm. I forgot to get that going today. So, so for this year, uh, hen, we're going to use Uncle Steve's the original shake. If you guys haven't tried any of his shakes, you guys definitely got to get. Okay. Oh, Let's set this in here. Let's go ahead and uh, get these quail going. Like I said, these are already processed. These are pretty small. Uh, they're about a pound or so for each one of meat. There's not a whole lot of meat. You see the breast, you got the legs. Very light, very small, thin bones, but these are gonna be awesome. Uh, Keep in mind, this is the first time I ever uh, worked with quail before, so I didn't know that they came this size or the majority. These are uh, SPG jalapeno. <clears throat> The weight of the quail is actually less than a pound because if they weigh a pound, you lose about a third of it in processing. Now I have some uh, jalapenos here that are already ready with the cream cheese. And that's a uh, jalapeno cream cheese. So I'm going to set that right inside like that. Let's see where it goes. Set that down like that. <clears throat> Side here. I've never done this. <laughs> this is gonna be a first time for me, and I've never actually had quail, so this is gonna be very interesting. So what I'm gonna do, as you see, I have it with the breast side down. I'll have any inside there. I'm going to do is I'm going to take this leg and tuck it inside. Take this leg and tuck it like that. Now the jalapeno is going to be sticking out hmm. this side here, but that's okay. Hmm. We're going to take a couple of uh, bacon, slices of bacon. And I'm going to tie it up. We're probably going to use about three of these, three slices of bacon. Let's go. Let's try this out. Stretch this out. These are nice, thick, big slices of bacon, so that works out really well. All right, we'll take this like that. Then we'll pull this around. Take that one like that. There we go. Grab another bacon. Stretch it out a little bit. the opposite direction around the sides one more slice So when you tasted it, how did you like the quail? Um, I actually liked it. <clears throat> um, I was uh, was really surprised that it tasted the way it did. Um, and I, I definitely would eat it again. I just haven't. It's been a year since I did this video, uh, but I don't have uh, connections uh, to get quail. Well, actually, I do, Verna. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm but, sorry. Right now, I don't have quail. Yeah. Because it. Nice My doing this. allergies got too bad to the dander. 
have it. So I'm going to do one more. But I, I do have rabbit. Here, so. Hey, I'm looking to do yeah, rabbit boy, boost, you up. know, you want to send me some. Yeah. <laughs> You think you're gonna do on what? I said I'm, I want to do rabbit too. So if you want to send me some, <laughs> you would have to come get it. Yeah. All right, all right. So we're out here at the pit now. We're getting ready to put this food up in the smoker. And you yeah, could race and quail. If I did it for five years in an apartment, in. you could do it. Yeah, the, the guy that I got the quail from, um, Nick, over at AZ Highland Homestead, um, he lives about three hours from me in Prescott Valley. And um, I drove out there to go get some from him, and um, we ended up bringing it back and everything. And uh, he told me the same thing. He showed me the little setup that he was doing to do the quail and stuff. Yeah, for me, I don't have to flip it over, get that crispy skin. It takes about 45 minutes or so. But we're just going to go ahead and smoke these this time. I'm in Arizona. Let's go ahead and grab these uh, quails. Once again, they're wrapped in bacon. We got the jalapeno popper on the inside. I'm going to set these on top. These are going to cook a little faster than the other ones. Oh, that's okay. Those up there on top. <sighs> and then here was an extra jalapeno. What I did was I have the jalapeno, and then that's when I stuff it. And then we have one slice of bacon. I'm gonna throw it in there. So I'm gonna let that sit like that. We're gonna close this up. We'll come back in about 30 minutes to check it out. Okay, that's how we're gonna show. You guys want to check yeah. out the results of that? Uh, we did drop the link in the in the in the chat, and I'll do it again. Go and check that, that way out. You can watch yeah. all of it, so he uh, can get the, that way. They can watch all of it, and you can get the credit of it. Thank you, Matt Verna. I appreciate you for that. Mm, you're welcome. What are friends for? That's they'll right. help they'll help each other rise up yeah they came out amazing um the the cornish hen i think in that video um i believe that's the one where um the 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 meat of the of the hen got so tender and juicy that when i when i showed it in the thing one of the legs fell <laughs> <laughs> hey that that shows you did it right Exactly. And you know what's funny is that it happens every time I do a spatchcock chicken or the hens or, you know, anything that I do like that. It happens every time that one of the legs falls. <laughs> so I have to have it like right over the plate just to make sure that I'm, it doesn't fall on the floor. <laughs> now, when I process my quail, I always cut the legs off and put those in a separate package. Uh huh. Because then I make my quote barbecued rent. Red, uh, wings out of it you know they're mock wings and they're always fun <clears throat> there's the Alta saying she's still here uh, legs too small for me to do alone that's why i do about eight of them for my meal <sighs> yeah they're buffalo wings I'll see you said hi to you. <sighs> see, when you do about eight legs per person, then it's worth it. 
Okay, I gotta find it first. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, are you interested in getting rabbits, Chef? Uh, yeah. rabbit? I mean, if if it's something we can work out, definitely. Um, my email is in my about page. If you want to send me an email, and then we can, or you can reach me on um, Instagram or Facebook uh, at Drunken Chef BBQ. Um, and then we can figure something out. <laughs> okay, Andy, you heard what he said. Yes, um, Drunken Chef has content on his type explanation point in Quail so you can drop your link. Sorry. Uh, what is it? Explanation point in quail. The word ex quail as after the explanation point. It shows you right on the banner. There you go. See what's now you want live rabbits to raise or already processed? Uh, no, nah, already processed. <laughs> well, we're talking about live rabbits. Uh, Live rabbits, you, you know, give your kids each have one do a bunch of quail and have the other one do a couple rabbits. Yeah, I wouldn't even know how to begin to process the process them if, if, if I was to have them live. I don't know. Uh, when I went up to uh, Prescott Valley with um, AZ Highland Homestead, who gave me the quail, um, <clears throat> we had talked about him showing me how to do it um originally but we didn't have a whole lot of time when we got out there so that didn't happen um you know he was explaining to me how, how he was what he did to raise them and he showed me all you know the cages that they were in or whatever and i was uh -huh. like pretty amazed by it but i don't have the time to do it i don't i don't have the patience for it with, with everything i have going on uh, between work and, and the channel and, you know, the rubs, uh, my daughter's dance and everything. There's not a whole lot of time to really um, get into something like that, you know. Althea, these rabbits are not the kind that you run around your yard. They prefer cages because they're <laughs> domesticated. If you let them run around your yard... Everything will eat them. Yeah, but do you guys have a garden, Chef? No. I have a lot of dirt. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had a lot of weeds, but uh, I just had the, the landscapers guys come through recently to get take care of that because my my uh my yard was looking like a jungle <laughs> yep. but, uh, rabbits can bring uh, can dig holes i used to have rabbits as pets back in the day when i was a kid never once did i ever think to eat them though <laughs> there you go chef next time we give you live birds so you can have really fresh meat Okay. They're very easy to do. Why can't I go to that? And you have to go to the Facebook, I mean, to the YouTube Sorry. page to be able to get to it. Okay. Let me find. Links don't work on the um, StreamYard side. Okay, let's see. Where is it? There it is. Got it. Sorry about that. 
All right. I'll take a look at it in a minute. Uh, Andy, thank you. Is that your video that, that uh, you gave me the link to? Swanson? What's his name? Steve? Yeah. I call him Cuz. Cuz? <laughs> Short for Cuz it. Okay. Oh, boy. Yeah, we got Quail Cod coming. No, it's from Jasmine Bass at Time and Timber Homestead. Okay. Uh, Andy, I got your uh, email. I'm looking at it now. Oh, that's awesome. You would have laughed last year at QuailCon. My cooey was being transferred after QuailCon to um, back to the campgrounds so that they could go to Louisiana. Uh -huh. And I got rabbits in from Andy Rabbit. Oh, nice. And Steve dropped, dropped the bottom of the cage out. So they had to do a like a grease pig kind of thing <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> and the person that could have filmed it all was laughing too hard to even think about filming. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know something was really funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it was, it was fun. QuailCon is now Quail and Homesteading Convention. This will be the fourth year of it. Oh, wow. I wonder if we have something like that out here. They have it in Oklahoma. They have the Okie Homesteading Convention. But we got people that come from California, from England, everything. From Canada. Wow. That's cool. Yeah, we could talk about that, what Steve suggested. Because <laughs> we could work that out between us. Yeah. I'll have to uh, reach out to you privately there. Yep. Let's see. Where are you located again? I'm in Ohio. Okay. Well, Oklahoma's coming up soon, Andy. There we go. All right, I got that video saved in my watch later list because I'll have to do that in a little while. <coughs> oh, she's going on. Close that. Oh, it's this weekend? Oh. So it's already going.
Yeah, it's only it's usually only one day. But we have more fun. Ours is two days long. It's on a Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, Matt comes from New Mexico. Oh, nice. <clears throat> My oldest daughter's out there right now. In New Mexico? Yeah, I'm not sure what part of it, but yeah, she goes out there uh, every year for her goddaughter's birthday. She just uh, flew out there the other day. Uh-huh. Yeah, ours are more fun because it's friendly. <laughs> <sighs> and we are uh, when we're together. It's like it's like going to a family reunion where nobody gets drunk. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In other words, there's none of that fighting and stuff going on. It's everybody supporting everybody else and learning. Well, at Quilcon, there's always vendors. I'm at, I'm at a table most uh, every year. Because I sell my freeze-dried foods. Oh, Chef, I want to mm. tell you something that's really spectacular. Mm. Is using the habanero on pineapple and putting it in the freeze-dryer. Say that again. You take sliced pineapple. Yeah. And, co uh, and sprinkle the hot rub on it. You know, the yeah. habanero. Yeah. Or summertime heat or the jalapeno, either one. And then you freeze dry it. And it's sweet and spicy. And it's so good. Oh, man, that sounds amazing. That and sounds Katrina's gonna be there, too. Yeah, so I'm going to be selling some of that at Quilcon because I got a freeze dryer. I'm writing this down, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> My recipe? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it would also be good if you, if you grill sliced pineapple. Use your rubs on it. Um, you know, we, we have grilled um, pineapple before. I did a, a Hawaiian sandwich with some sliced pineapples and stuff, and I never did think to put the uh, rub on there, so that's actually a great idea. Uh, that was uh, okay. pro probably in the beginning of when we did our rubs, when we first started doing our rubs, so it didn't really click to, you know what I mean, put it on there. Yeah, cuz, and I also got to do um, more fish jerky because Matt bought the only sample of fish jerky I had. <laughs> <laughs> See, I gave away um, some of the spiced pineapple in a drawing so people got a taste of it. So I got a lot. I have candy for the kids, freeze-dried candy and ice cream. And I have, um, I make jerky through my de uh, dehydrator. And I um, freeze-dry meals and stuff. So that um, at the people at the campground could buy one of my soups or something and just heat some boiling water up at the campfire and they got a meal. There you go. <clears throat> I can't remember who all won the pineapple. I know Buster did. 
and he liked it. I think Matt did. I'm not sure if you did. All righty. Barbecue pineapple is good. Yes, definitely. We've done, we've done grilled uh, watermelon as well. That came out pretty good. That was bomb. Freeze-dried watermelon's okay. It's just that... I like it better fresh. Hmm. To me, it doesn't have as much flavor... Because it doesn't have as much water. Because it don't have any water. Ah, uh, gotcha. So, all right, Miss Vernon, I hate to do this to you, but I got to get going because our event's about to start in ten minutes. So I got to start walking over there with my daughter. I appreciate you for having me up and uh, showing the video and always advertising our stuff. I appreciate you. Well, you have a blessed day. Thank you. You as well. Peace out, everybody in chat. Thank you for the conversation. Uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out. <laughs>
but I'm back now. Let me get back to the computer so I can see. Oh, not too much. I didn't miss. Cool. What you fixing for breakfast, Don? If it isn't different next time, uh, she goes to freezer camp. Yeah, TM, did you, did you see him? Ooh, about what day, Nikki? I have more coming a month from yesterday. So April 22nd or 21st. Let me get some more coffee and then I'll be right back on the screen. But I'm going to have to do a little thing to my nest box because I don't like how the bottom can flip up. So I think I'm going to use some aquarium sealer on the nest boxes so that they don't come up. And Wednesday should be the day. Cool. Well, you have to watch. Um, watch it. Watch, rewatch the first half hour. But here, let me see if the picture came up on my photos yet. Yeah, they did. There you go, TM. You can still see the spots. And look how shiny those eggs are. I think next year I'll get some of the different types of coloring. Like this, the kind that does the glitter like, and show what that looks like.
And let me see if I can show another photo here of the eggs. Two colored quail eggs are a thing. That's my third year do a third time doing them. Is Althea still here? And if you guys didn't know it, Tommy, which is Silver Creek Wildlife, he's a great spray paint artist. And we still have 10 people here. Are those silver foxes, Nikki? <laughs> no, there's something that's got like, like a glitter in the dye. I don't know how it does it. Hey, JJ. You could dye the um, empty shells for Christmas tree ornaments. Yeah, they do. Ed got bait started that. <laughs> got my coffee and forgot to turn my camera on. Oh, you have Sanded Rex in New Zealand. Cool. Are you saving their hides, Nikki? Because that's what I'm going to be doing. Yeah, that could work.
If you watch the Rabbit Tree Center, they show how to ta uh, how to um, do the hides, which seems pretty easy to me. There is a tree that you put up for Easter. It's a tabletop wiry thing. Welcome back, Andy. Well, you guys, I'm not going to hide this one. I need to get a smoke. Because we'll go till the half hour mark and then I have to have to have to leave. <coughs> Hello, Idaho Garden Girl. Idaho Garden Girl type explanation point and quail. Uh, so other people can see. There you go. Yeah, we died. <laughs> we died Easter eggs, the uh, quail eggs uh, for Easter. The first half hour of the video of the live stream, Idaho. IGG. Yeah, because some people don't don't see don't pay attention to the scrolling of the banner. So I tell you, so you can get it in there, and everybody knows to look for it. Thank you, IGG. Let me see something here. Okay, Stephanie. I knew I knew your name. Stephanie. I had to check my list.
Well, because that's kind of comical. <laughs> oh, I had I had to pull up my list because, you know, I got a wonky memory. That is wonderful. She's talking about mushroom spawns, in case anybody wonders. But I feel productive today. I did everything I accomplished to during my live stream today. Oh, that's going to be so cute. Yeah, they, this, well, at least it's not snow if it's rain. Hey. Dawn, little steps at a time. That is wonderful. That's the opposite of the problems I've been having with Amazon. Oh, I forgot. I was going to show you guys my um, jars that I got. If I, there's my cutter. Let me go get my... Oh, sorry, Lucy. All righty. Six pack of half gallon jars. They come with the canning lids and everything. Those seem to take forever to get. I ordered them um, March 10th. 
And then I got them yesterday. It took two weeks. Whoops. So it wouldn't be out of the question. Our average last frog is generally around May 10th. Yeah, about my birthday. And when it comes to incubators, the one that are like that is Little Giant. Yeah, now I got to find some of the half gallon plastic lids. <coughs> the box was in good order. They all look good, Andy. Tim, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I had something in mind when I posted it, but I forgot. Yeah, I know the tops can be, the mouths can be chipped. I think when I open up a, a bag of powdered eggs, then I can vacuum seal the those too. Maybe in your area, but not in my area. Now, those was a real good deal compared to everybody else, but it just took two weeks to get here. <laughs> I can see that, Dawn. Oops. Yeah, that is true. Let me see if I can find the link that I use so I can send them to you guys. Oh, they're not selling them anymore. Ah, uh, because they weren't getting them out in time.
Now here's where you get twice as many, but see what I paid on mine was only find it again. Seventeen fifty five. But it took two weeks for me to get them. <laughs> yeah, let me check here. Let me, I got to use my small ULR to get this so you guys can see. There you go, that gives you, uh, uh, now, for what I paid for six, you can get three of them. Or two of them. No, it's not letting me show the one I want to show. But I use the link and you guys can see a lot more. Okay, let me find the... Uh, let me do it without uh, security. I had to stop my security thing from doing it here. Let's see.
Okay, John, try this one instead. Yeah, that's a tiny ULR. <clears throat> All you gotta do is go to Amazon and type in sixty four ounce canning jars. I say it as Steve types it. <laughs> well, you guys, it's time for me to head out. Everyone have a blessed day. And I'll see you tomorrow night. At my shire. And thank you all for coming. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Matt. I'll see you tonight at at um, Grafted Branch Homestead.